In this video, we're going to review the concept of templates and leveraging templates in your application. Why are templates important? When you have a lot of equipment out in the field that is identical to one another or very close in configuration to one another, you don't want to do the same operation over and over again. In one of our videos regarding the overview of the starter samples, we reviewed the architecture where we have basically a configuration divided into two regions, region one and region two. And each region will have or be pointing to a set of equipment that is geographically distributed in the field. Think about it each being an outstation. Well, each outstation in itself, the RTU over there represented by the outstation is going to be connected to some inputs and outputs, whether there be analog or discrete, it doesn't matter. So we actually divided those into two sets. Now for the purpose of the example, for the starter example, we actually made each shelf station identical to one another. So if I expand these sets, you will notice that they are identical to one another. If I want to do this many times, I don't want to make these operations manually. I don't want to repeat this over and over again. So creating a template will facilitate me creating one set first and then duplicating it over and over again. Now here at the bottom of this set, we have a folder called templates. And in this, and in this template folder, uh, this is where I create my outstation template. What we're going to do now is we're going to show you how that was done in the first place. So I started another example, I, I skeleton from another example where I have the group and in each group I have defined two regions, region one with the direct channel and the outstation set and region two with the respective channel and outstation set. Now what we want to do now is start creating the template that is going to mimic the outstation. I created a group and that represents a folder. Uh, but there's nothing in it. So what we're going to start doing is mimicking what we have done in the other one to show that. We have basically three different things in that particular outstation template. We have the outstation object itself and then the I.O. And we have divided the I.O. in, a, in, a, in some grouping. So first we're going to create a new group and we're going to call this outstation equipment. Okay, and then we are actually going to create the outstation itself under that group. And this is a DMP3. So here's my outstation. All right, and we're just going to call it outstation. And there's several things that we want to configure there. First, we want to map it to the outstation set. Right, we're going to put it in service and uh, we're going to leave some of this stuff here alone for the time being. We're going to click save and see if there's anything else that we need. Yes. All right. Because of the type of configuration, we have to modify this. And instead of setting a specific outstation, we're going to basically say outstation IP address. Remember that the purpose here is to set a template that is going to be used there. And we're going to pick a port number here. Let's do 20,000. All right. So I just click save and you notice that the messages went away. So we're good to go. So that's the first part, the outstation. Now let's uh, create some uh, IO and then we'll group it later. So first we're going to create new the MP3. Let's do the analog input. And I did it, uh, pick generic short names for starters. Again, we got to map this to our outstation. Okay, we'll give it point 0.1. And we click Control S. All right, our checks are done. And so we can save that one. All right, I can now duplicate this analog input. So I'm going to do Control C, Control V. And I just copied and pasted it. I'll do the check and change the point number. Let's click Control S for save. Our checks go away. So there's our second analog input. And if we want to mimic uh, what we did here, we have two analog inputs and three discretes. 
So I'm gonna now create a, a discrete input. Okay, di one. Okay, map it to the outstation. Point number one. Oh, one thing that I forgot prior to doing the other two, I can go and correct it right now, is make sure that those points are in service. And yes. All right. Okay, save this checked. Now we can duplicate this. I'm going to do copy and paste. And you notice that it auto increments the number. Okay, I changed the point number to point two. Control S. Perfect. And then one more. Control C, Control V and change the point number. As you notice, it does do a check for duplicate points in this case, so we do have to have uniqueness here. So we got our, our station equipment. Now what we did before, we created two uh, subgroups inside, so let's go ahead and do that. And we called it IO group, group 01 and IO group 02. We did a little bit of grouping there, so we're going to move AI01 to group 1 with TI01. And the other ones to group 2. So now in order to create the actual template from this set that we just created, we go to our outstation equipment group right click say convert to group template see yes so now you notice that the um, group icon change highlighted by a folder with a little icon in red so this in particular is now a template i can use this as is in order to populate my region with uh, this template information I, i'm going to go to my region and say create instance of what and so remember we are in our dmp3-2 template set so here's my templates and i'm going to pick outstation equipment and by doing so i just created my instance i'm going to use my naming convention that i created before and so i just created my first instance of a template all right, let's do that again to repl replicate the other one because there's things that we're going to have to do in some of the areas when we have duplication from the template information. So now you notice that my second instance has an X on it. So that means that there's an issue with it. And if we expand, you'll notice that there's a configuration problem with the outstation itself. So we're going to go ahead and open the outstation and it's telling us that the address is not quite appropriate because we haven't done any of that addressing. So before I do that, I'm gonna go to my first instance and set the proper DMP3 address. So for my particular example, I'm gonna start with Pi 101. And then for my second one, I'm gonna set 5102. And you notice that the configuration issue got addressed now. We can do uh, the third example. Forgot to, remain, to rename the previous one, so let's do that. 
And uh, one of the important parts is that uh, if you're going to be creating a lot of uh, this configuration, it's important to have a good naming strategy that you can follow. Obviously, if you're going to use numbers, you may prefix them with the leading zero so they are remain in an organized fashion as this does alpha ordering. All right, so let's collapse this a little bit and you'll notice that my structure is starting to look like what I want it to look like. Now, we can go through the whole set and replicate that, but for the purpose of the video, there's a couple important parts that you want to consider. Uh, number one, let me open the outstations and for the instances, and you'll notice that some of the information is grayed out. So that means that this is locked at the template. Uh, the template is managing this information. Some of the other information is available for you to change. So what do I need to do in order for me to do two things? Either one, allow the template to propagate the information or two, propagate some information directly. And so one of the things that we're going to do is let me change this port generically everywhere. So I'm going to go back to my template. Here's down at the bottom. Let's close this so we don't get confused. I'm going to open my template outstation object. I'm going to go to the network and I'm going to set this port to 20001. And I'm going to click Control S for save. Now I want to verify if that information in fact propagated to my instance. So I'm going to open one of my instance examples and you notice that it didn't change and it didn't change for a good reason because this particular value was not grayed out. So what do I need to do for that? We need to go to our outstation equipment template group, right click and say edit property overrides. Now in the property overrides, where we want to focus for our example is here on the top right, we have a button that says select. What this is going to do is going to show us the properties of all the objects that are in the template. And you notice that it shows all my grouping and everything that is contained within it. And in this hierarchical tree, you will see all the objects. So we're going to focus on the outstation and remember that we wanted to change the port in the network tab. Now you'll see here that there's the properties, which is uh, the TCP IP port. What this means, what this checkbox means is that this is enabled to be modified at the instance level. So we are actually going to disable that, which may basically means that the template itself is the master of that value. So it can only be modified at the template. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to leave this open. Control S for save, which is going to save the uh, configuration change. And now I'm going to go back to my instance. Let's pick our instance and I'm going to do two things. Now you notice that the port value is grayed out and it did modify and change to 2001. If I go look at my second instance on station, you should notice that the data is the same. So what we have done uh, in essence through managing the property overrides is two things. We can one, propagate changes to our instances and two, we can actually enable or disable some of the configuration to be allowed in the instances. Well, that's actually all that we have for managing templates. You can actually do more involved templatization, but I think this provides you the basis of how you go about creating your templates and managing your application. Thanks for watching.